Hey guys, welcome back to a new YouTube video and welcome to my first official tutorial on this YouTube channel because the last time I tried to make a tutorial, it was trash. So today I'm going to show you guys how to make this deck of cards in Blender 2.8. Alright guys, we're in Blender now. So I have my keys in the bottom left corner just in case you want to see exactly what I'm doing. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select everything going to delete it so we have a clear scene to work with then we're going to press 7 on our numpad to go into top view shift a to bring up the menu or you can come to add mesh here then we've got a plane we're going to scale it on our y-axis and scale it on our x-axis to make it more like a shape of a card now cards have rounded corners so what we're going to do is we're going to bevel the corners of this card now you might make the mistake, if you already know how to use bevels, you might make the mistake of coming over to bevel modifier here, clicking bevel and trying to bevel it. And as you can see, it is not working. That is because there are two kinds of bevels in Blender. We have edge bevel and vertex bevel. What we're going to need for this is a vertex bevel. I'm going to go shift, control, V for vertex. And yep, go. We're gonna add two there, and we've got a curved edge. Once you've got your curved edge, we're gonna click into object mode, add a modifier. We're gonna add a solidify modifier. There it is, and we're gonna keep it as default settings because this is a card, and cards are very slim, I guess. We're gonna keep it at its default settings like this as you can see it has a bit of thickness right there extra thick so i'm gonna go apply so that is now part of the object properties click on it and you now have two faces one here one here and then all the faces around the side so we're gonna go numpad seven let's go into top view again we're gonna select the front face and we're gonna go uv Project review. So that's given us the shape of that for our card texture in the front view. And you're going to go Control 7 on the numpad and click that face and do the same thing UV project from view. So once you've done that, go into the shading tab in Blender. We're going to add two materials. So the first material we're going to add is front face. Once you have your materials added, you can come to your card, go into edit mode, click the front face, click front face here, click assign, click the back face, click back face here, and click assign. Now we've got to get the textures working. So in the description below, there's going to be a folder that I will link for you guys. It includes all the textures and everything that I use in this tutorial. So we're going to grab this vintage map playing card texture. Plug it into the color right here. I go to the back face, drag it in, and plug it into the color as well. So we're going to work with the front face first. I'm going to drag this to the side a bit, make it a bit bigger. Click here and go to UV Editor. Scroll out, bring this outwards, and we have the front face selected. So we're going to drag over this. I'm going to press G to grab, so you can see we can move it around to all these different parts of the image. I'm going to scale it down. And I'm just going to make this a king of hearts. Joker, no. Queen, king of hearts. There we go. So it's a bit too big now, so I'm going to zoom in. And we're just going to scale it until it's just about right. So once you've got the front face done, you can go to back face, just control number seven and select the back face and do the same thing, but the back face is down at the bottom here. And boom, got our card. 
got the king of hearts right there so once you've done all the texturing we can go back to layout mode and if you want if you want to see your textures in solid view you can click here and click texture and everything should pop up what we're going to do now is we're going to create the deck of cards so that it's so easy to make this deck of cards and when i found out how to make it i was overjoyed basically all you have to do is you click on your object actually go into object mode click on your object and you add what is called an array modifier so this allows you to duplicate whatever object you have as many times as you want so if you wanted a, a line of cards like that stretching into the horizon you could do it but we don't want that many cards so we're gonna go I'm gonna change this to zero that would bring the duplicate directly on top of the object I'm gonna come to constant offset I'm gonna go to the z-axis and bring it up by 0 0.013 that's what I use so that you can see the gap is extremely small between them and yeah so you've got your cards like that now what you can do which I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna make this negative to duplicate it the other way around. I'm gonna rotate this on the Y axis 180 degrees. So that way we have this deck of cards going upwards. So then we can change this to a number like 48. And we've got a deck of cards right there. But obviously this is way too perfect. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply the array modifier. We're going to come into object mode, just gonna click A, select everything. Gonna click P and separate by loose parts. That's gonna make each of these cards a separate object because when you use an array modifier, even though it looks like everything's separate, they're all inside one mesh. But when you do what I just what we just did now, it separates everything into different objects. We're gonna go back into object mode. And before you click off, before you click anything, you're gonna to come to object, set origin, origin to geometry. And that's gonna give each object, each of these cards, their own geometry. That's why you can see these dots right there. So now to make this a little more random and a little more realistic, and select all of them. We're gonna to go to, gonna press F3, search, randomize, transform and then you can play around with this get the results you want to get I'm going to put a seed of two actually five and I'm going to move it on the y-axis maybe two and on the x-axis maybe three and that just makes it a bit more random gives you more a, a more realistic deck of cards what you can also do is you can rotate it so either you rotate on the z-axis maybe by a few degrees Uh, let's try 2.5 degrees yeah so that's a messy deck of cards that's not been fully put together right that looks way more realistic looks a lot nicer gives things a bit more realism so once you've done that another cool thing you can do is if you just you don't want to leave it as a deck of cards and you want to get a similar result to what I did is you can select one of your cards a shift D to duplicate it, X to move it on the X axis, and then you can rotate it again along the Y axis 180 degrees to bring it back up. Then you're going to want to bring it down back to the ground. So G, Z, and just try and get it as close as you can. You can zoom in to see if you're hitting the mark. GZ down and that looks pretty good so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do another array modifier but I'm only gonna do three cards and we're gonna use the same function we use to make these look more realistic to rotate these cards around the point we're gonna change the origin point of the cards so that they rotate around the bottom so to do that you're gonna go shift left click at the bottom there you're going to go object set origin 
origin to 3D cost. So you're gonna apply the modifier, and go in again, select everything, e, separate values parts, make everything an individual object. Then you're gonna go object, set origin, origin to geometry. We're still gonna reset it again. Then we're gonna go object, set origin, origin to 3D cursor. That's just to make sure everything has its own origin. So now we're gonna select all of these again. And we're gonna go back F3, search randomize transform should still be there. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna put all these to zero. Zero, zero. The only thing we're gonna change is the rotation. And as you can see, the cards are rotating around that single point. So I'm gonna do 40 degrees, 40 degree rotation. That looks good. So then we're gonna select all these, move them. And if you look, all the cards here are kings, king of diamond, which obviously is not realistic. But because of the way we set up shading at the beginning, it's very easy to change the faces of these two cards. You're going to click one of the cards, you're going to go to shading, and go to edit mode. Click on its face. Look for where your initial thing was. And then G to grab. You can just move it aside, make it a queen. Do the same thing with this one. Then you go back and you've got three different cards. Oh, the last and final step, we're going to add a table for these cards to settle on. Once you've done that, we're going to add some lights. There's two ways to add lights in Blender. You can either go Shift A to add your own lights, add a point light for example, grab this and you can see this light right there, which obviously works wonders. But another good way to add lighting in Blender is through something called HDR. To get that working, just go to shading, come here, click world and zoom in. Delete this background node, shift A, search for an environment texture, click it, plug that into surface, and we're going to open up our environment texture. I saved mine on my desktop, open up. So that should be working now. Once we go into rendered mode, and boom, you've got lighting. The scene looks way better, just like that. So what we can do next is either we can just render our image like this or if you don't want the background to show in your image you can come to render properties click film and click transparent and it will get rid of the background so now it looks just like normal but you still get to keep the lights and everything so once you're done just get a good angle and like before Control alt zero now this is a bit too tight, so we're going to come into our camera right here, click camera settings. And this is where we can control all the settings of the camera. I'm going to go to 35 millimeters, make it a bit more wide. Uh, let's look down a bit because I don't want the background to show like that. So we're going to look down like this. And again, control zero. Move the camera to the side a bit, so G. Perfect. And then once you're ready to render, just click F12 and there's your render. You can now go to image, 
save as, save it wherever you want on your computer. You've got your render. Quick little tip for you, just to make your image a bit more interesting. You can come into camera view, go to depth of field, select the object you want to focus on. In this case, I'm going to focus on this one right here. Then you're going to reduce the f-stop until you start to get a bit of a blur. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. If you made it to the end, you're absolutely amazing. Stay tuned for more content, more tutorials, and I'll see you guys next week. Peace.